All right, everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. And since uh, point two two is on its way pretty soon, I figured I would pass the time by doing a bit of a modded adventure. That modded adventure being the Keithane Space Program. Now, if you're unaware, Keithane is a fictional um, element, or not really element, it's more or less a compound that is a mineral that can be found on other planets and their moons, and then we mine it and convert it into fuel. So this kind of adds a whole new dimension of moon colonies and you know mining operations on different celestial bodies so first off before we can really get into you know, like sending out stuff all like you know to mine it making space stations that contain the fuel we have to find it first and actually we do have keithane on the planet curb in here but i figure we would start off first with the mun so um in order to make ourselves or you know know where the keithane is we have to make a keithane detection um i usually use a smaller probe for this since uh the monitor that is on on it it doesn't really have to be very big as a matter of fact this is it right here we can use this little compact survey unit or we can use this medium survey unit, which is a whole lot bigger but this little one does the job but we do have to get a bit closer uh, 250,000 meters compared to 1,000 or 1 million 200,000 so this thing does consume quite a lot of power however since we'll just have it in an interesting orbit we'll probably just have it in about a, of um, an equatorial orbit so it just you know it does um, the equator orbit of the Moon if, if it had one but uh, then we could switch it to a polar orbit if we need to scan further for any more keythane. But since keythane usually does spawn in chunks and lines and, you know, like I'm just big clumps in general, uh, you usually don't have to move too far. So we'll just make all of our probes and um, all of our devices that we used to get out there, you know, like our, um, our fuel tank, our mining operation, all that stuff. It'll have wheels on it so we can make a train and then just uh, keep going with it so it won't be too big of a deal if we do, in fact, run out of fuel at some point. So we'll just add a nice little electric propulsion system to this thing as well. It'll make very small corrections. It'll take it a, a very long time, but it's uh, better than nothing. And, you know, since we do have a lot of um, radon doesn't be used too quickly, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's Xenon. My bad. Xenon is not used too quickly in this engine is extremely 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 efficient uh, so yeah that'll be our engine of choice oh yeah no doubt about it so basically this is going to be our typical rocket structure now I'm going to show this once you know just so um, whenever I do future launches I'll probably just cut those out and we'll just kind of uh, you know find ourselves at the International Space Station where we have all our fuel and good stuff all our Kerbals uniting but I uh, usually I like to do for uh, typical launches I do um, what, what is it called it is called sp not spaghetti um, uh, asparagus staging there we go <laughs> spaghetti staging I'm not sure where that one came from but yes asparagus staging that is what it's all about and that is basically where you have um, you have stages on the sides like so I am um, right here I have these big orange Rockomax tanks and what you do with them is you jettison them or you know you just detach them after a while um, when they're out of fuel but the fuel will be carried by fuel lines into inner tanks which will in turn be used to fuel the next stage so we, you know we have fuel uh, full stages that uh, will help us get into orbit easier and you know it'll be all it'll be fantastic reusable and stuff if we uh, decide oh goodness gracious that was not according to plan okay hang on let me uh, let me do that one more time oh boy there we go hopefully our fuel lines aren't all jacked up oh never mind what fuel lines are you talking about okie dokie so let's just do our fuel lines right here and these fuel lines do have to be in a certain direction you can see the little arrows on them like so this uh the fuel is heading from this tank to this inner tank and then from this inner tank into this center tank so then as we uh, detach then we decouple whatever you want to say um the next stage will be completely fueled up and we'll be able to get that much further oh yes and our main propulsion device here or not device uh engine rather is going to be the main sail yes that is my favorite engine oh my my goodness this thing gets the job done no questions asked and um, I usually add some structural strut connectors here just to make sure um, things don't wobble all around um, they do not wobble to the flow if you know what I mean <laughs> alrighty so it is I'm going to make sure to connect the satellite as well and when we jettison it or decouple it uh, it won't be all it won't freak out honestly it will not freak out it will not have a meltdown rather it'll just kind of have a temper tantrum and it won't it won't be too bad and we'll just add some rcs just to assist with all the movements and once again this is just my typical launch structure and this is what will get it done in a future time so let's just put on plenty of rcs's and you know we'll we'll um, decouple this 
once we are pretty much in the atmosphere, so it won't be a big deal if we're wasting our CS at this point. Uh, yeah, that is basically it. So yeah, we have our probe here. We'll be sending this out to the Mun to do some surveying, but first we must name this thing. I think it's going to be the, the Keythane Probe uh, Mark One. Yes, this thing is indeed a Keythane Probe. But notice the flag, the Keythane Probe, oh yeah, or the Keythane, or KH4, oh yes. Uh, a bit of potassium with some four hydrogen atoms. So um, the typical launch structure goes as follows. You know, um, we do the typical um, apoapsis of 100,000 meters, and then we just go from there to the MUN. So I'm probably just going to cut out that since I'm sure you've been watching enough Scott Manley or HOC Gaming, whoever you've been watching, it's just all typical. I do the same thing that they do as it's the most efficient way to do it. So yeah, I'll just catch you guys when we're at the MUN. All right, everybody, so we are in a stable orbit around the Mun at round about 100,000 meters, or 110,000 meters, rather. So we won't interfere with any of our future space stations or, you know, orbital paths. So, you know, we're safely above the surface and, you know, we've got plenty of room for maneuvering and all. Now, it's a shame because we're going to waste a lot of this fuel, more than 500, I'm not sure if that's if the unit is gallons or, or liters or whatever it may be. Either way, unfortunately, we are going to have to decouple it. Now, I'm going to kind of throw it down towards the surface as best I can. Um, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Um, if we attached a unit, we would be able to um, deorbit it using RCS, but that takes a dreadful amount of time. I think on the MUN, it would take about, um, probably about, I don't know, about 10 or so minutes to do that. It takes quite a long time, believe me. <laughs> so anyways, we are just going to deploy all of our solar panels here. Oh yeah, so we'll have plenty of power, and it's about time to turn this guy on. Now let's try not to hit our um, our fuel tank right here. This thing is rather close. I don't like that. Not one bit. Perhaps we can switch back to it and maybe do some RCS shizzle whizzle with it. Okay, it does not seem as though we are able to do such a thing. Oh well, either way, uh, let's just switch back to our satellite here, and if you don't know how to do that, it is the left and right bracket keys yeah uh, it took me a while to find that out myself when I started playing Kerbal Space Program all right so when we have our compact survey right here we just have to left click on it and it'll start marking out on the surface so basically all you um, right here we have the keythane scan map if we left click we can see how this little um this quadrant right here it's easier to see on the uh on the planet Kerbin because um, there's not as much topography in terms of craters and all but uh if we do a bit of time acceleration here we'll see how as the satellite goes around it'll find these blank areas and also find green areas the green areas are obviously where the cur uh, curbing <laughs> the keythane is and the uh white areas are where there is absolutely no keythane now as we can see right here there is a whole lot of keythane in this area however whenever I do like to mine Keythane, I usually like to find an area that has generally flat topography, either that or it's at, in a um, an area where there is quite a lot of, um, or it's just like a giant, oh, what is it called, crater, like say like right here where it's sort of flat within the crater where it's uh, it's able to deal with, you know, it's just, I want to make it easy for myself at least, but you know, finding the Keythane is going to be a chore nevertheless, so we'll see if we can find a topography that is favorable to land on while our space, or our space probe over here, now as you can see, we do have a bit of a blank area because um, as I said, the survey unit does take quite a lot of power, now over here, this is looking pretty good, and this flatter area where there's only a few craters, I think that might be a favorable landing site right there. And even if we do run out of Keythane in one of these areas, we can just move to one of the next and honeycomb-like structures. Yes, look at that. So um, as we go, we'll just go back to the space station. This thing will keep mapping out. And let's say it does um, several rotations and all. We'll be able to adjust the apoapsis and um, the whole orbit to make it polar instead of... Um, I believe the term would be equatorial, but I'm not sure if that's correct. Please excuse me if I'm wrong. But um, if we were to make this a polar orbit like so we could just um we'd have to do uh, adjust this maneuver node here quite a lot to make it work just so you know it's not too bizarre or out there um it wouldn't take too long but um since we do have a an ion engine it would take um the burn would probably say about 10 or so minutes uh, believe it or not and uh, we could try to bring this guy in like so, but this would probably be the best we could get, and that's about 265, so we would not be able to scan there. So unfortunately, that uh, may not work out very favorably for us. Uh, we could do this right here, 109 by um, 126. Uh, whenever we want to change that, we put out a bit of a slant to go with the orbit, you know, just to find more and more key thing. Look at that deposit right there. Wow, that's pretty intense. All right, now it says 15 seconds because we have not actually fired up the engine right here, the ion engine, but um, that would be in good time. But while this is powering up, or while it's just scanning, we'll come back next time, and I think we'll be ready to, you know, send a lander over there. I'll work on the 
the lander, work out some good designs, and cross-reference them with people who have done stuff with Keythane before. Um, but until next time, my name is Jebediah Kerman. No, I would never impersonate the Jebediah because, you know, Jeb, Mech Jeb, he has a mod named after him. That, for goodness sakes. Oh, wow, look at this. Wow, this is like the biggest strain of Keythane I've seen in one place before. That is intense. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jebediah Kerman. I I'm just going to impersonate him anyways. And I'll see you all very soon.